during my trip to Key Largo, Florida, I had the fortune of being able to dive the U United States Coast Guard Cutter Duane twice. This 327-foot treasury-class ship was purposely sunk as an artificial reef in 1987, and since that time has been gathering life in Key Largo. I've been told that in the sand surrounding the Duane, you'll often see bull sharks and tiger sharks. I caught a shark at one point on camera, but it was so small and so remote that it really didn't appear very well. At the beginning of this video, I'm approaching the stern of the ship, and this is the view from the stern of the crow's nest. The stern sits in approximately 103 feet of water. The bow is actually a little more shallow. During my time in Key Largo, I was fortunate to see only one lionfish. This was the one and only. I'm told that in areas that aren't frequented by the tour companies, the lionfish dominate, that they have decimated the population of native fish species. But guides try to kill them whenever they have the opportunity. The Duane is absolutely covered in life. There are schools of fish that literally pour over the ship. It's a beautiful sight to see. Here's the bow of the ship, and here you can see what I'm talking about with the schools of fish that are literally pouring over the ship. They come down from the wheelhouse onto some of the lower decks. There is life everywhere. I was able to do a number of swim-throughs on my various dives. Some were quick journeys through the interior of the ship, like the one here, and some were much longer. I learned in some of these swim-throughs the importance of proper equipment configuration. I was also fortunate to see the amount of life that exists even on the interior of the ship. Several species of fish use the interior of the ship as a refuge, others as a rooker. You can see the number of coral that's growing absolutely everywhere on the ship. Here's yet another swim through and you can see schools of fish that live inside. I dove the Twain with Rainbow Reef Dive Center out of Key Largo, Florida. And I, I can't compliment these guys enough. They were very friendly. And when I asked to go to a certain part of the ship, if it was within my certification level, the dive guides were happy to take me. If I were ever to visit Key Largo again, I would certainly use this company. Again, more schooling fish. Sometimes the fish would literally pour over the side of the ship. I've never seen behavior like this, where they were sitting vertical in the water column as though it was a normal posture, a normal position for them. The Duane is filled with little swim-throughs like this. We weren't allowed to do penetrations. We could only do light to light swim-throughs. But even then, there was plenty of routes we could take. After exiting the wheelhouse, I came across this little fellow, a green moray eel. I'd seen several on molasses and French reef. But this is the first that I, and only, that I saw on a ship. I was able to get quite close to him, within a foot or two. And he sort of sat on top of the Duane as, as king of the castle. This is yet another swim through, but this one shows that the ship is starting to age. It's been there since 
the late 80s and portions of it are starting to deteriorate. So here you can see down into the lower cavities of the ship. There are penetration access points, but because this was a recreational dive, we weren't allowed to actually penetrate down into the depths of the ship. There was so much life throughout the ship, it was almost like you'd bump elbows with the, with the fish anywhere you turn. We came to the crow's nest and I had to do the touristy thing just like I did on the Spiegel Grove. Swam up to the crow's nest, hopped over and had the dive guide take a video or photo of me. I wasn't able to put my feet down because there are actually large coral growths that are sitting on top of the tower. This is the shallowest point on the ship. This was by far the longest swim through I've ever done. It was actually two swim throughs. We went through this one corridor, hooked a right, and then went back in the ship. You'll see what happens. Pay close attention to this gentleman's console that you can see dangling in front of me. Also note how high in the water column he's swimming. He kept ramming the top of his tank, the hand wheel of his yoke valve, into the top of the doorways. This is actually really dangerous because you can potentially dislodge your first stage if you hit the hand wheel of the yoke valve on a doorway. You'll see right here, he ran, runs into the doorway and he's fighting to get through. I followed this gentleman throughout the bowels of the ship. And at one point, I actually have to assist him in getting through. Most tech divers use DIN first stages, which don't have the hand wheel. They also advocate streamlining as much as possible. And coming up soon, you'll see why it really is important, especially once you're inside of a ship like this. It also emphasizes the importance of buddy teams. This was a really, really narrow corridor. I was unable to do a frog kick in here to keep the silt from being stirred up. So instead I had to use a modified flutter kick, where you only kick from the knees. There were some particulates in the water, but overall it wasn't too bad. There were holes cut in almost every room, so you could do light-to-light -light swim throughs if you wanted. We just took the longer route that we found. As you can see, here's another uh, exit point. So it was perfectly safe. We were no more than 20 or 30 feet from an exit at any time. Here you see he gets stuck yet again. As we make our way through the doorway, his console gets stuck on an outcropping. Right here. I can only imagine the panic that would set in in this situation. You can see that it's completely stuck. I dropped the camera so I can help him remove himself from this predicament. His retractor actually snaps the, the safety clip. But even that gets wedged in between a uh, bent piece of metal on the door frame. Thankfully, I was able to pull it out and pull him loose, which is why I had to drop the camera. We make it out, you can see that his retractor is now dang, and it's been pulled out from the console that it was attached to. And just for a little variety, another swim through. 
there really were a myriad of opportunities. Of all of the wrecks that I dove, this is probably my favorite. The Brenwood, the Spiegel Grove, and the Duane. And this one, you could see the entire ship, or at least the outside of the entire ship, in one dive. At 227 feet long, you could sort of circumnavigate it fairly easily. Whereas, with the Spiegel Grove, I've only seen a fraction. Here's a view from the top of the ship, so you can get a full perspective. The crow's nest is about in the middle, and I rotate around, show the smokestacks. Here's the bow of the vessel. There's a large hole towards the front that you can actually dive down into if you want to access the interior of the hull itself. Here's a, um, a closer view of me standing fins flat on the bow at 97 feet. As I was doing a safety stop, this little remora came and visited us. 